Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to another Mind Bomb training video. Uh, today's topic is um, uh, maybe an unusual one, but it's um, sod off money and um, why entrepreneurs need cushions. So um, uh, the reason I came up with this is um, some time ago I came across the, the concept of um, sod off money. Um, the idea that you can actually um, have a, a reasonable amount of money in the bank or cash on hand um, that will give you some freedom to make your own decisions. So if you're in a, if you for your business, if you're in a rented property, or um, uh, maybe if you're um, in a partnership agreement, or if your business is a franchise, um, if you've got significant other stakeholders in your business, then you need to keep watching this. Um, hopefully you'll find it interesting. Yeah, I came across the, the concept of um, the sod off account, sod off money, um, some time ago, it was um, to do with high-flying city types um, where they were obviously earning significant amounts of money but put under huge amounts of pressure and um, asked obviously to work all hours and um, uh, maybe 24-7 sometimes, put under a, a serious amount of pressure to um, get the earnings that they were making. And um, where it came about is that people reach a breaking point and they're yearning for something different that's not just money uh, related and not um, constantly uh, grinding them down in terms of the business. So it's just that ability to um, yeah, have a, um, enough to fall back on that you can turn around and you can tell your boss, um, you know, I'm not going to take any more of this crap, um, sod off, I'm leaving, <laughs> I've got enough in the bank, thank you very much. Um, and then being able to uh, take a break from that um, uh, treadmill, uh, get away from things, uh, maybe even take six or 12 months off and think about what you um, really want to do with your life. And um, it's that concept of um, uh, being having the, the freedom, being able to turn around when you've just had enough, when you just um, don't really want to, to know about it anymore. And you can, um, you can in your own words, you can actually um, uh, decide to take a different path. You can do something different. And I think that's the, the key to it. So even if you um, earn a good salary, as in the, the case that um, I was referring to, then um, it can still be the same. You can still be very tied to the, the job or your employer um, if you don't actually uh, build some of that salary into, into your own fund. And um, yeah, essentially, if you're, if you're tied, if your money's gone at the end of every month, um, if you have nothing left over or very little left over, then you're not going to be able to build that freedom. You're not going to, to actually have the, um, to be able to take the decisions into your own hands and have the freedom to decide on what you really want to do um, in life. And again, that's the same kind of um, logic when people are coming to start a business. Um, often it's the, the same kind of thing that holds people back. Um, is that feeling from struggling from month to month to month. And you might have a, an idea, you might have the, the best new design or the best new uh, product in the, the back of your mind, but not being able to actually carry that forward, not being able to um, uh, pick it up and run with it can be very frustrating. So uh, regardless of how much you're actually earning, the, the principle is the same. Uh, you've still got to be able to build um, something of a fund so that you can actually um, have yourself the freedom to make those decisions in life. So my advice is definitely to uh, think about this as early as you can. Um, whether you're still, whether you're still working with um, another employer, and um, uh, maybe it's a, a long-term thing, it might take you a little while to be able to to um, create some spare funds. Um, or equally, in your own business, you need to start thinking about it even at the the um, starting point, uh, so that you're not committing everything all into the the business in one go. So you need to hold something back as your own sod off fund that you can create and gives you the, the um, some financial freedom for the for the future same sort of concept is equally important um, for entre all entrepreneurs we're not necessarily beholden to um, employers um, in the same way that the the person doing the nine to five job 
um, but we can very much be um, beholden to other people in negotiations. And this is why I referred to the, the at the start to um, the position if you have um, a loan overdraft with the bank, if you have a rental uh, property that you have to pay for every month, um, all of those kind of things. When you get to um, renegotiate them, uh, you need to, to build the same sort of um, resilience for yourself. And it's really important, especially in a, a negotiation, to actually have that fallback position, uh, that you're confident in the, your own uh, position and make sure that um, uh, maybe people might be aware of it, um, but make sure that you're actually um, thinking about it when you uh, come to renegotiate. Um, one good example, if, you're, if your business revolves around one particular customer or supplier, um, you can build a very nice business over a period of time, maybe as a franchise, um, but it can always come to a point where maybe the, the terms of that business are changed, um, maybe the pressure's on the, the franchise holder and uh, they need to, to change the uh, terms of the franchise agreement. Um, and it might feel like there's very little you can do unless you have some funds held in reserve so that you've actually got that freedom. And um, yeah, effectively, whether, whether you use the term or not, you build the, the sod off fund and you can turn around and tell people, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, that's not for me. And um, thank you very much. It's been great. I'm now going off to do something else. And the same, same applies with um, property. If you're in a, a rented property, and the landlord wants to renegotiate or um, even as the situation is at the moment, many people are actually trying to renegotiate rents downwards. Um, there's a lot of negotiation over property um, situations now and um, that's got to be the same. You need to be able to cover the, uh, the disruption from the business if you're going to, to move. So your fund needs to be able to allow you um, that disruption to the business so that you, you know at the back of your mind you've got that fallback position of um, not totally being beholden to um, that property and that landlord. If your business has to move then you can continue somewhere else. Um, if you're only running day to day, week to week on the um, finance, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to um, uh, withstand the shock of a, a move um, to the business and uh, that might actually be the, the end of the business entirely. So it's really important to actually have that, um, uh, that buffer and um, the ability to see it through to, um, to your own security, make sure that you've actually got um, your own fallback position. So the question is how much you actually need in the sod off fund, and that's a really difficult one to answer. Obviously more is better, um, but we have to be realistic. And. Um, in my experience, I think a good measure is probably six to 12 months of the income that you're actually likely to derive from the business. And um, that will give you some measure of um, freedom on the decision-making front. Um, very difficult to know, and obviously the, the high-flying city types um, talk in terms of hundreds of thousands and um, needing to, to be able to get through the next year after after leaving a particular high-flying job. Um, and that may be the case if they then want to go off and be a, um, a writer or a, an artist or whatever else, where they might not actually make anything for a year, two, three years hence. So they might actually need quite a, a significant chunk. But um, in terms of a, a rough guide, I think six to 12 months um, income, whatever that may be for you, um, can be a, a useful guide for how much you're likely to need. Um, and obviously, as I say, more is always better. Just another point on that, um, it may well be that you can strengthen your position. You, you, it's probably better that you um, keep the um, exact depth of the resources private and um, it's not something that you should necessarily shout about. Remember, in negotiations in particular, you shouldn't um, lay all of your cards on the, the table all in one go. You're not going to let everybody um, know exactly where your position is and exactly what the, the lines are that you want to draw. From the perspective of a, a negotiation, then you want to be able to keep the other side guessing. Um, maybe you've got £10,000 in the bank, maybe you've got £50,000 in the bank, um, but at least if you can um, um, let them know that you have a, a fallback position and then the depth of that, the amount that you've actually got, um, is your own business. You've got to keep that private and um, it's very much a, 
um, I think about the negotiating position being stronger if that um, information is only with yourself and you keep it close to your chest. So yeah, how much is a, a difficult question, but obviously something is better than nothing and that's the, the rough guide that um, you need to follow. Um, just while we're talking about how much, one of the, the rule of thumb about this can be, um, in terms of finance, it may be that um, um, you can actually use, as the business develops, that you can actually use um, some slightly longer term finance to help you build that short term buffer. So whether that's vehicle financing, plant equipment financing, um, whatever it may be, um, then it can actually be quite a good idea because that kicks some of the, the, um, the uh, repayments further down the line. And that might give you the opportunity to withdraw some money relatively short term that you can then hold back, that you can actually build your, your sod off fund with. And um, that can be very useful. Now, I'm not suggesting that um, you should use all different means of short-term financing to do this. Obviously, if you've got credit card and short-term overdraft debt and that kind of thing, then it's probably not such a good idea. But if you're able to um, arrange slightly longer-term financing, then it can be a useful way of actually pulling some money to one side um, and, as I say, just holding it back and putting it into your fund. Um, Finance is a funny thing if you bear in mind that um, one of the one of the um, positions you might find yourself in is if ever you're um, uh, going to ask for a loan or ask for finance, then that might be exactly when you need to to actually draw on your sod off fund. It might be the bank manager that you're actually willing to um, turn around and say sod off. I'll take my business somewhere else, um, and that might be just the time that you need the the money to to draw on. Um, so yeah, it's a funny thing. Make sure you've got the balance right. But um, yeah, it can actually be a, a good way of um, considering how to um, give yourself that extra armour plating in the negotiations. So building from the, uh, the uh, issue of financial resilience, if you like, um, going on from there, the other question that came up um, while I was actually going through this was um, <laughs> why entrepreneurs need cushions? And it's the same kind of thing, it's that resilience, it's the ability for your um, business to be able to withstand um, immediate and fairly short term shocks. Um, and those are the kind of things that if you're going to run the business smoothly into the future, then you need to be able to identify them and um, try and um, yeah, build a, a mitigate the risk, uh, build a plan so that you can actually um, reduce those risks. So other than finance, obviously there's issues around the finance and um, uh, like I say, we talked something of, of that with the, uh, the banks and um, other uh, institutions that may actually finance the business with you. But the, the, the other kinds of things that you need to consider, one is with um, employees. Do you have key employees that you're very dependent on uh, for the business? Is there a key designer that's um, coming up with most of the designs and really a lot of the, the, the product and sales that you're coming out with might actually re revolve around one person. Um, if that's the case, then from your perspective as a, a business owner, that's um, quite a risky situation. And you may want to um, bring other designers in, maybe just on a freelance basis, <clears throat> but certainly build the resilience so that you've actually got more strength in depth um, in the talent within the, the business that you have. Another example of a, a situation where you need to um, find the resilience and um, uh, identify the, the, the problem. Might be with um, intellectual property or design registration, patents, that kind of thing. Um, if you actually have quite an income deriving from those um, patents or licenses, then you need to be very aware of um, the, the timelines as the business goes on and also what's going to happen when it's no longer there. So maybe you need to be putting more money, investing more money into the future uh, developing more in the way of patents and new designs and um, developing more in the way of intellectual property for the business into the future or alternatively maybe you don't actually want to pursue the business in the, the same way um, maybe the idea is to diversify and um, do something slightly different in the future so you can actually say there's a finite time for that business um, but to uh, withdraw money over that period of time that you can then put into a different uh, new venture. So uh, yeah, building that those cushions helps you to make the decision and um, 
should actually um, protect your, your business. It should give you more resilience in the, the business. And that's definitely important over the, the longer term and certainly helps in your decision making as well. Um, so, <laughs> as I say, one cushion might look very different for uh, one type of business to another. It may be to do with employees. It may be to do with the way the business is financed. It may be to do with the, the uh, where you're deriving most of the income from. So uh, think carefully about the issues that could cause the, the business serious harm. And um, those are a way you need to actually look for resilience and build the, uh, build the cushions and um, help reduce the, the impact of any um, shock to, to that part of the system. Um, really, it should allow you the time to react that's the thing it needs to allow you that time to react um, and to bring in different um, uh, build the changes basically bring in different responses to whatever the um, the shock is to the, the business so really all I would say is if you if you do nothing else then um, think about building your sod off fund for the future make sure that you've got some financial resilience um, either privately or with, certainly within the business um, and actively build it um, just keep control of it yourself and uh, make sure that you can, um, it gives you that kryptonite factor. It gives you the ability to um, negotiate that bit harder um, and it gives you the ability to feel more confident about the future of the business. Um, so yeah, build your, build your sod off fund and um, let me know uh, what it means for you. And I hope it, um, hope it works well for the business. I hope you like what you've seen today and um, it's been useful for you. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, please subscribe um, down there somewhere for the, the bell and the like notifications. And um, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.